All right, so picture this. For years, we've all joked that Apple would make a foldable when the time is right. Well, it looks like 2026 might finally be that moment because Apple's first foldable iPhone, whatever they end up calling it, the iPhone Fold, or maybe even iPhone Ultra, is shaping up to be one of the most interesting products they've worked on in a long time. And today, I want to run you through the six biggest leaks that give us the clearest idea of what this thing might actually be, plus when it's coming and how much it'll drain your wallet. So, let's get straight into it. The first leak is all about that outer display, and Apple's reportedly going with a 5.5-inch panel. Which sounds tiny by today's standards, right? I mean, these small iPhones now start at 6.1 inches. But 5.5 inches? Apple's done that before. Think back to the iPhone 6 Plus, 6S Plus, 7 Plus, 8 Plus. So instead of going huge like Samsung or Google, Apple's clearly aiming for something compact, something you can flip open like a techy little wallet. And that idea makes even more sense once you hear the second leak. The inner display is rumored to be 6.8 inches. Compare that to the almost tablet-sized screens on other foldables. And yeah, this thing is going smaller. Not because Apple can't go bigger, but because they want a specific shape. Not a book-style fold like the Galaxy Fold or Pixel Fold, but a wider, shorter, wallet-like device that opens into something closer to a normal phone, not a mini iPad. The benefit? When you open it to watch something, you don't get giant black bars everywhere. The content fills the screen properly instead of floating awkwardly in the middle. And honestly, it'll fit way better in your pocket. The third leak is probably the big one, and the reason this phone has taken forever. The Hinge. Apple has reportedly been obsessing over this because that crease you see on every foldable they absolutely hate it. And now, apparently, they've developed a liquid hinge system that practically eliminates the crease both visually and physically. Supposedly, you'll barely see it and barely feel it. This alone explains why Apple hasn't jumped in earlier. They wanted to avoid the whole creasing meme altogether. If this turns out to be true, it'll be one of the standout features of the device. Now, the fourth leak is about unlocking the phone. And this one surprised me. It looks like Apple might ditch Face ID entirely for this device and bring back Touch ID, but not as a home button. It would be integrated into the side power button the same way it works on the iPad Air and iPad Mini. And honestly, it makes sense. You'd otherwise need two Face ID systems, one outside, one inside, and that would eat up space and force a dynamic island on both screens. With Touch ID, you get a full display, probably with a simple hole punch camera, and you avoid all the complication. All right, leak number five, the cameras. Apple is reportedly planning four in total, one outside, one inside for video calls, and then two on the back, likely a wide and an ultra wide. Don't expect a telephoto lens or crazy zoom system. Apple seems ready to keep the big zoom hardware exclusive to their Pro and Pro Max models. And honestly, most foldables don't have amazing zoom anyway, so Apple's not losing much here. And then we've got leak number six, Thickness and battery life. Apple recently proved with the iPhone Air that they can make a ridiculously thin device without ruining the experience. So imagine that level of engineering going into a foldable. Opened up, this thing could be around 5.3 millimeters thin. Folded, maybe a bit over 10 millimeters. Not the thinnest foldable ever made, but remember, this is Apple's first attempt. And they're clearly prioritizing durability over chasing a record. The good news? more space for a bigger battery. Combine that with whatever Apple calls their next chipset. The A20 Pro, new N-series silicon, maybe even a separate co-processor for efficiency, and this should be one of the longest-lasting foldables we've seen. 